Yaho YouTube, I am Super Kianki, and in today's video we're going to be reading How to Stop the Negative Thought Loop in Your Mind, published on October 21st, 2018, on thebestbrainpossible.com. Even if you don't know what rumination is, I'm willing to bet you do it, maybe even a lot. What is rumination and why do you do it? Basically, ruminating is thinking about something over and over. It's when your mind grabs hold of an issue and keeps mulling it over without any real purpose or benefit. Ruminating is exhausting, stressful, a waste of your time and mental resources. Ruminating is exhausting, stressful, a waste of your time and mental resources. The majority of ruminating thoughts are about problematic, negative, or upsetting things. Rumination is your is really rumination is really your problem. Solving and planning, brain just trying to do its job, a little too enthusiastically. Rumination is really your problem solving and planning. Brain just trying to do its job a little too enthusiastically. Yeah. While it's true that these higher level skills of your big brain are essential to overcoming life's difficulties, you are taking these executive abilities to the extreme. When you ruminate, people often spend hours ruminating about the same thing without any productive outcome. Productive outcome. Rumination is the brain instinctively attempting to solve a problem, make sense of something, change a reality that you aren't ready to accept or figure out what went wrong. Rumination satisfies your brain. Rumination satisfies your brain temporarily because it gives you. Rumination satisfies. <laughs> Rumination satisfies your brain temporarily because it gives it something to do about the problem, the unaccepted situation, or the troublesome circumstances. In reality, it's just spinning its wheels, making you feel worse, and not accomplishing anything useful. Your brain and body respond to your thoughts. Rumination keeps your brain and body responding as if the events, the insult, the pain, the panic, is happening right then. It brings a past or future emotion into your present and subjects your body to it over and over. It's been scientifically proven that just thinking about something causes your brain to release neurotransmitters, chemical messengers that allow it to communicate with parts of itself and your nervous system. Neurotransmitters control virtually all of your body functions, from hormones to digestion to feeling happy, sad, or stressed. The thoughts that run through your head even change your cells and genes. If you keep replaying the mistakes you made at work that caused your company to lose a big client, what chemicals do you think you're repeatedly flooding your body with, and how do you think they're making you feel? You can't stop reliving the gut-wrenching scene where your partner tells you that it's over and they're leaving. Do you think the neurotrans? Do you, do you think the neurochemicals your brain is continually releasing are helping or hurting your you physically or emotionally? Do you think the neuro? <laughs> do I just read this again? Do you think the neurochemicals? <laughs> it's, it's funny. Not not the, not the topic, just the reading out loud. Do you think the neurochemicals your brain is continually releasing are helping or hurting your phys you? <laughs> did I said it again? Do you think the neurochemicals your brain is continuous, continually releasing are helping or hurting you physically and emotionally? If you keep reminding yourself that you can't pay the mortgage again this month, which means they're probably going to foreclose on the house, do you think your brain is producing neurochemicals that help you stay calm and rational? The research is very clear. Science confirms that people who spend a lot of time ruminating are much more likely to develop mental health problems such as depression, anxiety, and PTSD. It was the biggest predictor of anxiety and depression in the UK's largest ever online test. I read that test. Well, I read about it. About stress, rumination keeps your brain and body responding as if the upsetting event is happening right then. How does rumination differ from health, healthy introspection? You may be wondering how you're supposed to solve problems or learn from experiences if you don't think about them. I'm not suggesting that you just think positive and ignore or push away painful or disturbing thoughts about things you need to process or deal with. That's not healthy either. 
Some introspection is absolutely good. You have to let your mind mull over challenging and unpleasant experiences occasionally. It's how you learn and grow emotionally and come up with solutions and ideas. In fact, creative solutions and ideas are more likely to bubble up from a brain that applies unconscious thought to a problem. Rather than going at it in the deliberate approach with your analytical brain. But there's a healthy midpoint between ignoring problems and engaging in damning rumination. Introspection is con constructively exploring something consciously and mindfully in a way that generates new patterns of thinking, new behaviors, or new possibilities. Rumination is rehearsing, rehashing old emotional stuff and digging yourself further into a negative mindset. Mindset. Here's what Rick Hansen, author of Buddha's Brain, The Practical Neuroscience of Happiness, Love, and Wisdom, had to say about the difference. For me, the key distraction is whether the reflection process is productive. Introspective, introspection is productive. Rumination is not. It's repetitive, negativistic, and often self-flagellating, and thus a major risk factor for anxiety and depression. That's a solid, solid, solid point. <clears throat> So this is the last part of the article. Self-distancing self breaks the rumination cycle. Interesting. Many people slip into rumination when they're trying to process their emotions or solve a problem. They may get stuck in a negative pattern of replaying past hurts without moving towards solutions or feelings of resolution. One of the best ways to reflect on difficult circumstances without getting trapped in the emotional spin cycle of rumination is a skill called self-distancing. A shift in perspective can beneficially impact the way you think, feel, and behave. A self-distanced perspective, as opposed to a self-immersed perspective, requires that you take a step back and view yourself and the circumstances objectively. Research, research shows that when people self-distance when discussing challenging subjects, they understand their reflections better, experience less emotional distress, and display fewer psychological signs of stress. Experiments revealed that people had reduced reactivity when remembering the same problematic events later. They were also less likely to engage in ruminating thoughts. Self-distracting leads to more productive and self-distancing leads self-distancing leads to more productive and adaptive self-reflection while processing negative experiences. Studies with children suggest that self-distancing helps them move towards reconstructing a distressing event in a way that provides some insight and closure rather than just replaying the emotionally upsetting details. Additional research found that self-distancing has other psychological benefits, including a reduction in aggressive thoughts and behaviors and angry feelings, and an increase in executive functioning and the ability to better manage relationships. The article then goes into the four ways to practice self-distancing. I'm going to leave it there. If you would like to read this article in full, you can. there's a link in the description. You can click that. Thank you for watching the video. Hope that you like it. Subscribe if you haven't. I really want to get to 10,000. Share this video with your friends because we need to get positivity out there to more people. And blogs are a great way to get positivity out there. But most importantly, even if you don't do any of that stuff, just keep coming back because, you know, it's a journey that we're doing together. And the more time you spend invested in the journey, the more you're going to believe it's possible. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.